What's up everyone, welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to show you how to use the memory bank feature to make your AI coding agent more efficient and have less errors. So, the memory bank feature was introduced by Klein, the AI coding extension, as a way to make AI perform more effective and efficient. The problem with AI coding agents like Klein or Cursor is that they have memory loss. They will eventually forget past conversations and lose context because of their limited context window. This means when you start a session, you either have to repeat explaining your project or the agent has to analyze your code base to regain context. To solve this memory problem, Klein proposed the memory bank feature. It stores structured files to help the AI retain context across multiple sessions. This way, you don't have to keep explaining things, the context window doesn't get filled up, which reduces or even eliminates hallucinations. Basically, Memory Bank is a set of custom rules that instructs your AI coder to maintain specific markdown files as documentation. These markdown files will record important information about your project, such as describing the project details, the system architecture and technology stack you used in the project, keeping track of the tasks you're trying to do, and any other relevant information. When you start a new session, the AI will look into the memory bank files to understand your project, so you don't have to repeat explaining your project details. The memory bank can also be updated when specific milestones in your project is achieved, so it will always be up to date. In essence, Memory Bank will maintain six files related to your project. The first file is the project brief, which is the foundation document that shapes all other files. This file creates a high-level overview of what you're building, as well as core requirements and goals. There is an example added here, but usually a project brief is much more detailed than this. Next, you will have the product context, which explains why the project exists, describes the problems being solved, and outlines how the product should work. Then there's the active context, which lists the most frequently updated files, contains current work focus and recent changes, tracks active decisions and considerations, and stores important patterns and learnings. After that, there's the system patterns, which documents the system architecture, records key technical decisions, lists design patterns in use, and explains component relationships. And then the tag context lists technologies and frameworks used, describes development setup, notes technical constraints, and records dependencies and tool configurations. And finally, the progress file tracks what works and what's left to build. It also records current status of features, lists known issues and limitations, and documents the evolution of project decisions. When needed, the AI can also create additional files to organize other relevant information, such as complex feature documentation, integration specifications, API documentation, testing strategies, and deployment procedures. And that will be everything you need to know about Memory Bank. Next, let me show you how to create a memory bank for existing projects both in Klein and Cursor. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year as it will mean a lot to me making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Okay, so here I have Klein open in VS Code and I have a web application project created using Next.js on the left side. In this demo, we will try to create a memory bank for this project. So the first thing we need to do is to open the client window and then click on the scale icon on the bottom left corner over here. This will open client rules and workflow settings. In this settings, you can create custom rules globally or specific for the current workspace. We will create one globally for now and name this as memory-bank-rules.md. And then in this file, we need to add the custom instructions provided by client. So go back to client website and scroll to the top over here. And here's the client memory bank custom instructions. Now click the copy icon and then paste it to the rules file and then save this change. Next, create a new folder in your project folder and name it as memory-bank. This is where all memory bank files will be created. Now, we can ask client to initialize the memory bank for us. So here in the chat box, just type initialize memory bank and client will do the job. Now, one thing to note is that you need to use a capable model because client will scan your entire project for creating the memory bank. So top models like Cloud Sonnet, Gemini Pro or Flash are probably recommended to generate the memory bank correctly. Here, I'm using Cloud for Sonnet 
You can choose any model equal to Cloud Sana 3 or 4 to do this. Okay, let's press enter now and let client process the request for a moment. And now it asks us to read the files in our project, so we will just allow it. And then it will read a bunch more files to get the project overview. And then after understanding the project, it will start creating the necessary files in the memory bank folder. It will follow the custom instructions we put in client previously. So let client finish this process. I will skip a little to the end. And here the request is done and client reports that it has created the core files. So let's open the memory bank folder. Also, keep in mind that you need to review the generated files after initialization and correct them if you see any misunderstandings. Any wrong or missing information put in the memory bank will influence all future interactions with the AI coding agent. If you got wrong information in the memory bank, it will severely limit the AI ability to assist you. And that's how you use the memory bank feature in Klein. Now let's open a new session and suppose I'm a new developer working on this project. I can just ask Klein what is this project about and then press enter. And here we can see that client wants to read the memory bank files in order to fetch the project overview. As we keep this memory bank file updated, client will know when there is a significant update completed in the project and it will improve your productivity with the project as well. And here we can see that client responds with the project overview, the tag stack, and the current status of the project, which will be very useful for people new to this project. Okay, now we will see how to create the same memory bank feature in Cursor. Here, I already have Cursor with another project of mine already open. So in Cursor, the steps are quite similar. First, you need to create a custom instruction telling Cursor about the memory bank and how to use it. You can find the instructions for Cursor in this GitHub GIS. I will link this in the description below. So this Cursor instruction is very similar to Klein. And we can copy this by clicking the row button on the top right corner over here and then select all the tags with command A or control A for Windows. Copy this text and then go back to cursor and open cursor settings on the top right corner. Uh, let me close the side windows first and then open the rules tab on the left side. Here you can add user rules or project rules. User rules will be applied globally, while project rules is specific for the currently open project. I will set the memory bank as user rules here, so let's create a new one, and then paste the rules we copied before, and then save this change. With the rules set, we can close the settings window, and go back to the main cursor interface. Here, we can create a new folder named memory-bank just like before, and then ask Cursor to initialize the memory bank for us. Make sure you're in agent mode and use advanced models like Sonnet. And then send the request to Cursor. Let Cursor work for a moment. It will read the project files. And then after it gain an understanding of the project, it will start creating the memory bank files. This is pretty similar to client before, so I will skip a bit to when this generation is finished. Okay, so here we can see that Cursor generated the same memory bank files, just like Klein, but it added one more file, which is the .cursorRules file. The .cursorRules file is a project-specific file that records the patterns and code intelligence that will be followed by Cursor whenever it creates or edits files in this project. Some example of information included in this file includes the naming convention for files, classes, and functions used in this project. But in essence, the memory bank files created here is the same as in Klein. It will always be maintained by cursor and it will be updated automatically when there is a significant change in the project. So overall, that's how you can initialize and use memory bank feature in AI code editors. The memory bank feature allows you to create and store important project details for your project so that the AI can work more efficiently. Will this increase token usage and cost more money? Well, using memory bank will increase token usage as the AI loads all memory bank files at the beginning. But because of the context provided by memory bank, the AI coding agent will have consistent understanding of your project, making it more productive and have less errors. This increased productivity may decrease your overall interactions and usage of AI to achieve the desired outcome, which means memory bank has the potential to save you money in the long run. 
And if we go back to client, you can see here that loading all the memory bank files using Cloud for Sonnet costs us about 7 cents. So for the cost of 7 cents, you can load all the relevant information on your project and make client more effective. In my opinion, it's a very good trade-off, but you need to try it out in your project as it may produce a different result. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So what do you think about the memory bank feature? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Kowin Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.